So we are actually going to open up Cordis now, uh, and we're going to be taking our entire design, load it into Cordis, and uh, generate the RPD file that we need to burn to our board. So in Cordis, and I actually have the project open right now, so I'll just kick that out, but um, you actually want to go into Quartus and go down to File and Open Project. You're going to want to find the uh, build directory, and that's already open here, but it's uh, it's in your Arduino libraries directory, um, and then in the Accelerate build, we go into Extras and Quartus there, and then we're going to uh, we have these three different uh, project files that we can open depending on which board you're targeting. And we're actually building for the Accelerate Snow today. Um, so I'm going to open the Snow QPF file. And it takes just a moment to load that. While, while that's loading, Brian, I'm okay. going to throw another poll up here real quick. Sure. If that's all right. Um, just out of curiosity, because I've had this question come up in terms of design entry. And I'm just curious, you know, we, we tend to be a Verilog house here. We've got a long history of that. And all the stuff we've designed uh, so far has been in Verilog. Now, we know we have a lot of users out there that use VHDL as well, particularly with FPGAs. And if you kind of come out of a government or some of the industrial sectors, and we know we can do some, some co-simulation and co-synthesis of those, of those languages so just wanted to get a feel for that as we're looking at how we build things out going forward or what we're doing in the future, it's good to know what people are using. So um, if, if you guys could take a quick look and let me know, is it uh, Verilog VHDL or are you doing something different? Uh, we are also looking at some of the high-level synthesis uh, techniques and tools that are out there in terms of being able to maybe enable our customers to write some of their design code potentially in C and then take advantage of some HLS tools to convert that to RTL that could be used on here as well. That's quite a ways out. We haven't actually taken any tangible steps there yet, but that's something that's very interesting. So anyway, just uh, wanted to throw this poll up here. So far of the, of the few people that have answered, it looks like VHDL is currently in the, in the lead. Give just a, a couple more seconds here for people to to take a look and share your thoughts and I'll end it and share the results here. Oh, come on. It's neck and neck almost, v Verilog and VHDL. <laughs> anybody else? Anybody else? I should have thrown Emacs versus Vi up here too and we'd get people involved. I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to add a free comment section there though. Oh, I'm tempted to stop it now at 50-50. Six of nine have, have reported so far, but I want to let Brian get rolling here. So, all right, well, I'm going to end it and I'll share the results with you. So it, we ended up at three and three Verilog versus VHDL, but I will say that the VHDL advocates answered first and most emphatically. So that's probably the most popular right now among the, the crew. But anyway, thanks for sharing. All right, Brian, sorry to interrupt you, but go ahead and get rolling. All right. Uh, so the other setting that uh, you want to take note of is uh, our accelerate board. You actually can build targeting a 16 megahertz clock, a 32 megahertz clock, or a 64 megahertz clock. Um, so the, the default is always to build for 16 megahertz, but uh, we do we do offer those two other speeds. Today we'll, we're building for the 16 megahertz. Um, but you can find that in this drop down menu up there. So the next thing to do is to compile the design and uh, you can do that by, you actually just uh, go to processing start compilation or simply click, there's a, a blue triangle icon in uh, Cordis and it takes about 10 or so minutes to do that. So um, I'm not gonna be doing that today. I've already compiled the design for us, but um, all, you, all you do to start compilation is just click on this blue arrow here. So once you've compiled your design, which I have, uh, you want to convert the compiled design to RPD format, and the tool for that is built right into uh, Cordis as well. So um, 
So uh, after the compilation is complete, you just click on the file, convert programming files, and open up your conversion setup file. So I'll show that here in Cordis. Clicking on file, and then down to convert programming files. I'll open up this dialog window here. Then you wanna open your conversion setup data. And it's going to open the Cordis directory again, and there's different uh, conversion files for each of the different uh, possible board and clock combinations. So again, we're building for the snow today at 16 megahertz. So I'll just, uh, I'm going to open this conversion file here. And then down at the bottom of this dialog window, just click on generate. And because I've already created it, I get some warnings, but it just takes a moment and it's going to generate the uh, output files for snow at 16 megahertz. And then you can close this dialog window. So the last thing to do is to launch the Arduino IDE and load the RPD that we've built to our accelerate board. So we're going to upload our design to the FPGA now. So to do that, um, we've actually built the tool right into the Arduino IDE as long as you have our board tools installed. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up the Arduino IDE now. And, uh, and you'll, find, you'll, you'll, you'll find the uh, here under tools on the Arduino manual, uh, you, want to go, you want to go down to the board selection here and then uh, roll down until you find our Alorium Accelerate boards. And uh, to, again, today we're building for the Open Accelerate Snow. So, uh, so you just select the Open Accelerate Snow as your option here. Then you wanna make sure that your port is selected. I've got my uh, board plugged in here and it shows up as COM16 on Windows. Um, the rest of these settings don't matter for burning the uh, RPD image. But uh, once you have that selected, the last thing you do is you click on burn bootloader. And again, I'm not going to be doing that today. I've already finished the exercise here. It takes, uh, it takes about two minutes or so to do that. But uh, um, you, you just click on burn bootloader. And uh, after a couple, couple minutes, the uh, board is going to have your image on it. And if, if anyone's interested in, in seeing that process, we do have a demonstration video on our website of you know, how to run that burn bootloader. It's, it's not for one of the open accelerate images. I think it's like switching back and forth between 16 and 32 megahertz or something. Um, but that if you want to kind of see the type of output you'd get and, and how to check it using a, one of the Git Accelerate version sketches that we have to verify that it changed, those videos and demonstrations of how to do that are on our YouTube channel. So now that the uh, Accelerate board has our new image on it, we're going to show what we've done now. So um, for the LFSR, um, I've uh, written an Accelerate LFSR header file. It's, uh, it's just a, a simple little class that handles the uh, register access for um, the LFSR. And that's, that's really all it's doing is just accessing those registers. So you can see the the registers are defined up here at the top of the file. There's the control seed and data registers, and the addresses of those registers match exactly what we defined them as in the RTL. Um, and there's just, uh, uh, you can set the seed and you can get the result of the LFSR, um, and you can control the uh, bits in the control register. So that's really, that's really all the software layer is doing to talk to that, uh, the RTL burned down to the board now. So um, I'm actually going to load up the, uh, an example now so that we can see the LFSR uh, running in the RTL. So this is very similar to the software solution that we saw at the beginning of the presentation, but uh, there's no, you can see there's no uh, um, software function running to calculate the LFSR anymore. All we're doing is setting up the initial settings of the uh, LFSR registers in the RTL. 
and then simply uh, querying the uh, LFSR data register and printing it out to the screen. So um, with my Accelerate plugged in, I'm going to write this sketch to my board. And I'll open up the serial monitor so that we can see the resulting output. Okay, so again, this is the uh, the same sort of logic running on the RTL uh, on the accelerate board now. So let's talk about what we've gained by doing this. Um, if you remember at the beginning of the uh, Brian, yep, just a comment there. Oh yeah, you might have noticed that the values were printing out every one second. Yes. So and even though right. we've accelerated the LFSR function, the rate that those come out is still controlled by a wait one second command in the software. So exactly. Yeah, I have. It's not reflecting any speed up yet. Right. This delay that I have here is uh, is just telling the it's telling the program to wait for one second between each print, and it's going to uh, get a new version of the LFSR each time that it uh, reads from the data register. So again, uh, from the beginning of the presentation, um, we had the, the assembly code that was generated for the software solution for uh, the LFSR logic. That was 22 instructions that were executed every time we generated the new LFSR. Um, and then with the uh, RTL solution, we actually have reduced that down to a single instruction where all we're doing is reading the value of the uh, data register. So this is the, uh, the difference that, that we, we're talking about between software and uh, RTL solution.